Larry Elder versus The Breakfast Club. Okay, let's get into it. It's going to be a spicy one. People living in the inner city that people on the left claim that they care about. Do you think slavery mm -hmm. I, was self-inflicted? Or do you think Jim Crow segregation was self-inflicted? Or do you think, you know... Slavery was self-inflicted. Self of course, it wasn't self-inflicted, but but uh, but, the, but but there are a lot of there, a lot of people have bloody hands in slavery. Mm -hmm. For example, slavery could not have existed had it not been for African chieftains who were selling black slaves captured uh, in battle or captured through raids and selling them to European and Arab slavers. It could not have could not have existed without that. So everybody has dirty hands here. That's why reparations is such a foolish thing. If you're going to get reparations from the 5% or so of white people that have some sort of generational connection to slavery, and that's all there is, then you need to go back to Africa uh, and get money from African countries uh, that were involved in the slave trade and, the, and in the Arab slave trade. And by the way, the Arab slave trade was even worse than European slave trade. 90% rate of attrition often making men and women walk on barefoot across the Sahara, and the men were castrated, uh, only about okay, five... So, so, so. I mean, with that, I never even heard of other people being enslaved. Like, anytime you hear about slavery, they all automatically just push it towards black people. That's interesting. So, so if they go after the money from the other countries, then would you agree that it would be okay to go after the money from America? Is that your problem? When are you going to stop with this? Everybody has no, a grievance. I just asked a simple I'm just, question. I'm, 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 answering, I'm answering your question. There, no, there, there's no end, there, there'll, be, there'll be no end to this because slavery has okay, been part of fine, human history uh, a, from the very beginning. Question. Okay, we'll be now, getting money. I've let you talk, sir. I've let you No, you haven't let the man talk. Can you let the man finish his statement? Wow. You talk, and every time I talk, you begin to talk, and then you say, "Let you finish." So I asked you a very simple question. You said, "If you're going to go after it in America, go after it in Africa." So if we all agree to go after it in Africa. Will you then agree to go after it in America? It's just a simple question. No, yes no, or no, no, I won't because it's a waste of time. We ought to be spending our okay, time no on problem. on education. Next question. Okay, you okay, okay. You yeah. told me that that I cut you off. Then I try to answer your question. You won't let me finish. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead Larry. Thank you. It's a waste of time. We ought to be talking about working hard, investing in ourselves. Right now, as we speak, there are Haitians uh, in Haiti lining up for a lottery to come into this country. Why? Because it is the land of the free and the home of the brave. You can go from nothing to something faster in America than any other country in all of human history. We ought to be talking about that. Let me just, one more point. 1997, Time Magazine and CNN hooked up together to do a poll on what black teenagers and white teenagers felt about racism. Mm -hmm. And both of them were asked, is racism a major problem in America? Both of them said yes. But then Time and CNN asked this question of the, of the black teenagers. Is racism a big problem? a small problem or no problem in your own daily life. This is 1997. 89% of them said small problem or no problem in my own daily life. In fact, twice as many blacks said failure to take advantage of available opportunities is a bigger problem than racism. That was 1997. Twice, 1997, look it up. It's 2023 though. You think America's more racist now after the election and re-election of Barack Obama than it was in 1997? Yes, because of the election of uh, MAGA, Donald Trump. <laughs> You see the problem now? The Breakfast Club have a huge impact in the black community. Usually, most of the news that the black youths are listening to are coming from the Breakfast Club. Um, all of the new music, all their favorite artists are on the Breakfast Club. So they hold a lot of importance in the culture. And for the host of the Breakfast Club to say something like this is ridiculous. And it shows of the people who are put in place to be in charge of the community, of how they're just treating it so reckless. And they don't even care about it. With statements like these, they don't even care about it. 100%. Yes. Really? Absolutely. Well, how is it? How is it, uh, Charlemagne, that Donald Trump got eight percent of the black vote in uh, in twenty sixteen? He got twelve percent in twenty twenty, a fifty percent increase. He got twenty percent of the black male vote in twenty twenty. Uh, if MAGA is racist, how do you explain that that Donald Trump substantially increased the percentage of black votes the Republican Party got? Burn, burn! This man is destroying them, destroying. Let's continue.
Not people make. Poor so why choices. are you running against oh, Trump, oh, then, Mr. Elder? Yeah, so, I'm, so, not, so, I'm not running against him. I'm running against Biden Harris. Any one of the Republican nominees we have would be better than what we have right now. I'm not running against him. I'm running to put forth the issues I just now mentioned that I've been talking about for the last few minutes. You know, I want to ask you about that. You know, after four indictments, 91 criminal charges, don't you think it would behoove the Republican Party to move on from Donald Trump? I think that the voters in the primary will make that decision. What do you think, though? I have no problem with, with uh, I thought Donald Trump did an extraordinary job uh, as president, especially for black people. Best economy ever. He did something about the borders. The people that are most hurt because of porous borders are black people living in the inner city because most of the illegal aliens have little or no education. They end up living in the inner city. They compete against uh, black people with high school or less for jobs. Mm -hmm. There are about a million fewer black people working than, than who, who would otherwise be working if it weren't for illegal alien labor. And illegal alien labor, according to a study done by the Civil Rights Commission, puts downward pressure to the tune of almost $2,000 per year in the salaries of black people living in the inner city. And Donald Trump uh, gave us the most secure border we ever had. He also supported school choice. He also did the, the First Step Act, which allowed about 5,000 uh, mostly black men with long criminal uh, sentences, nonviolent, to have their sentences reduced an average of 70 months per. Uh, he pardoned Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion. Even Barack Obama didn't do that. Yeah, he think, did an I extraordinary think, job for black people. I think you're innocent until proven guilty, but I feel like <clears throat> President Biden had four indictments, 91 criminal charges. Uh, you know, President Obama had four indictments, 91 criminal charges. Y'all would be telling them that they need to step aside and they shouldn't be running for president. Well, I wouldn't vote for Barack Obama or for Joe Biden in any case, no matter whether he had indictments or no indictments. I don't vote for tax and regulate liberals. Um, you're a conservative, right? Obviously. No question. What, what initially made you gravitate towards being a conservative? I think it was my father. My father was a lifelong Republican, and my father always told my brothers and me the following. Democrats want to give you something for nothing. When you try and get something for nothing, you almost always end up getting nothing for something. And my dad, I told you about his background. He told my brothers and me that... Black people pay attention. This man just exposed what Democrats have been doing in your community for years on years on years and you keep on voting for them and you keep remaining at the bottom. You gotta wise up. This is the message to wise up. Are you still gonna continue voting the way how you're voting? Well, your community is still gonna remain the same. Fair exchange ain't no robbery, right? And if you want it different now, then that's when it would be a robbery because you actually want different for your community. But making the same decision, voting for the same people over and over and for your communities to still remain the same is a fair exchange, is what you want. Hard work wins, you get out of life what you put into it. You cannot control the outcome, Larry, but you are 100% in control of the effort. Before you moan or groan about what somebody did or said, do you go to the nearest mirror, look at it and ask yourself, what could I have done to change the outcome? And finally, Charlemagne, my dad, told me, my brothers and me this. No matter how hard you work, how good you are, sooner or later, bad stuff is going to happen to you. How you deal with those bad things will tell your mother and me if we raised a man. I wrote a book about my father's life. It's called Dear Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. It's about an eight-hour conversation he and I had uh, where at the beginning of the conversation, I thought my dad was harsh. He thought he spanked us too often. He, we, had a, we had a belt. In those days uh, from the South, you spank kids. Uh, and I thought my dad was way too harsh. And we had an eight-hour eight hour conversation, and by the time we ended, my dad got bigger and bigger and bigger, and Larry Elder got smaller and smaller and smaller, and I apologized to him. And it's a book that that's changed a lot of people's lives. It's called, as I said, Your Father, Dear Son, Two Lives, Eight Hours. The paperback is called A Lot Like Me. Same book, but it's cheaper. Can you honestly say this is the Republican Party that you grew up on? This modern-day GOP? Yes. Uh, the Republican Party pretty much has always stood for low taxes, low regulation, uh, 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 peace through strength, not strength through peace and strong borders, and still does. And, and when Donald Trump is gone, and he will be gone, mm -hmm. even if he gets reelected, the day after he gets reelected, he's a lame duck, the party will still go on. The principles will still go on. However, I do believe that uh, many people in our party uh, have, have uh, spent and spent and spent so that Ronald Reagan, my favorite president, when he entered the Oval Office, Charlemagne, uh, when he left, the government was bigger. It got bigger under George Herbert Walker Bush. It got bigger under W. It got bigger under Donald Trump. And the only way to restrain spending is with an amendment to the Constitution to fix spending to a certain percentage of the GDP with exception for war and for natural disaster. Otherwise, we're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Let me use the word unsustainable. Mm -hmm. That's the word Barack Obama used to describe the so-called entitlements. Uh, unsustainable was a word that Bill Clinton used to describe them. But nothing happens because if you run claiming you're going to reform Social Security or Medicare, the other side is going to accuse you of not caring about the sick, the poor, the elderly, and you are going to lose elections. That's why government gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we need a law to restrain spending. Otherwise, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And for young people like you, uh, these programs are not going to be there. Mr. Elder, 
Uh, I, I know a lot of black conservatives and, and I, I I completely agree about the black family. I, I don't think anybody here objects to that. Don't I disagree just, about that at all. I, I think when you talk about ideology and then you mix in parties and then personalities, it gets kind of confusing. And, you know, you mention yourself not to moan and groan, you know, that as long as you work hard, all is well. And I think what this question is not going to make any sense. The person is already in their emotions all over the place. They're still trying to dissect what the man has been saying for the whole interview and doesn't have anything fresh. The only thing they're gonna ask is gotcha questions. And I hope, I just hope Larry could just demolish those gotcha questions. Cause that's all they're gonna do. You could tell they don't believe in them. With the questions that they asked him, you could tell they don't believe in him. They're not even giving him a chance at all. Let's see. The conflict is coming in is you did moan and groan about how the Republicans treated you. You did moan and groan about Governor Newsom and, uh, you know, asking for a recall. You did not leave that up to the voters. You are moaning and groaning when it comes to Donald Trump and how he's being treated. So it just seems to be a hypocrisy. And I don't know if the message would land a little bit better if there was some fairness across the board uh, on Democrats and Republicans. I'm an independent, by the way, and I think both parties are trash. And I think all of us here, you know, see both sides. I and I, that's the part that's just not landing. For me, there seems to be well, an unfairness on both sides with you. Well, not too surprisingly, I don't agree with your analysis. How is it that I did not leave the recall to the voters? What do you mean by that? What do you? You said you said again? you said I didn't leave the recall to the voters. No, I, no, said, no. I said you moaned and groaned about it. You you said it should be recalled, correct? Correct. I said Gavin Newsom should have been recalled. Yes. Right. That's moaning and groaning. Well, actually, it's taking advantage of what's in the California Constitution, which is when a certain percentage of voters sign a petition to recall a politician, uh, there can be a recall vote. And there was one as there was in 2003. We recalled a governor then. And there was in 20, 2021 when I attempted to recall Gavin Newsom. That's part of our democratic process in California. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. We we agree with that. I'm going to your statement when you said rather than moan about it a little while ago, you said rather than moan about it, I'm just going to keep doing the hard work. And so I'm just saying that technically is moaning. Well, about how is that moaning if he actually get up off his tushy to try to encourage 3 million people to vote to overturn that's not hard work did not tell you that they just want gotcha questions to try to like make this man look terrible they don't care about him and this is black on black crime <laughs> because the I, I governor's don't... the side. I don't, so I don't, I don't, that, that's my point, I don't, sir. I don't, I don't it's, follow. It's, I don't follow exactly what you're saying. I really. Don't. It's okay. I, I don't okay. expect you to. Yeah, but it's, I'm, it's I'm, one I'm, moment. I'm a, little, I'm a little slow one sometimes. One moment. One moment. Yeah, we get it. Yeah. One moment you're complaining about the system, and the next minute you're saying the system is is fair. The next minute you're saying it's not fair. So that's what I'm saying. There just seems to be a double standard on you and the system, not wanting to be accountable for a system that do, black do people I, are not do, in charge of, by the I, way, do I, of not wanting to hold both sides accountable when it comes to the system. Do I believe Hillary was treated differently and Joe Biden treated differently than Donald Trump is being treated? Yes, I do. Is that an indictment about whether or not America is systemically racist? No, it is not. Those are two, they're, they're two, totally two different, two different things. things. Yes, you're, yes, you're trying are. to merge the two, but they're two totally different things. I agree with you. The two different things. No, no, we're, still, we're agreeing. We're agreeing. The two different things. We're agreeing. No, we're agreeing to two different things. We're not agreeing that there's not systematic racism because we're not in charge of the system, sir. In case you okay, unfamiliar, okay, all right, all right. Can we, can we? Black can, people can, have never been in charge of any system. Well, we're not actually, in, actually, 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 we, actually, we have been. Take Baltimore. No, we're, we're, no, we've never been in charge. May, of may any I finish? System. Any? No. May, tell me, what financial system are black people in okay, charge of? Let, let's what take, healthcare system are black people in charge of? What government system are black people I'm, in charge I'm, of? I'm about ready to tell you. Prison system are black. No, black people in charge. I'm about ready to tell you. I'm not talking about mayors. I already know that talk talking point, sir. I go on Fox News all the time as well. So let's not let's not go there with that. I said, what system have we created? Goodness. Have we implemented that we have been in charge of? Name one. Is this why you don't like talking to black women, Larry Elder? Wow. Um, ba Baltimore. <laughs> uh, Freddie. Even Charlemagne realized this person is out of order. How do you speak to a respected politician, especially a respected black politician like this? You think this man worked so hard to reach this far? for you to try to tear him down? You, you really care about black people? Why are you trying to tear another black person down? Oh, you're not even realizing what he's doing. 
Oh, let me guess. He's a Republican, so he's not even considered fully black for you. Gray, a few years no, no, ago. No, no, no. That's mayors. I'm not talking. I said system. I'm Remember going to like tell you system. about this system if you allow me to finish my point. I'm not talking about somebody elected and doing a job, sir. I asked what system did we create? What financial okay, system? Okay, let's talk did about the create? system of one yeah, of the largest. Let him, let him say his point, thank you. Then. One of the systems of one of the largest uh, uh, cities in America, Baltimore. Uh, Freddie Gray died in police custody a few years ago. Uh, the mayor was black. The head of the police department was black. Number two. Uh, it's not person, in charge of the system, but go ahead. Number two person in charge of the police department was black. All Still of, not in all, charge of the all system. city council, Democrats, majority black. Six, Still not in charge of the system. Wow. Six, That's a off, position. six officers charged. Three of them were black. A judge before whom two of the officers tried their case, found him not guilty, was black. Still uh, not the, in charge of the, the system. The uh, city uh, uh, intendant of public schools was black. The county superintendent of public schools is black. Uh, the attorney general at the time, Loretta Lynch, is black, as was the president of the United States, was black. And yet, still not people, in charge of the system. So who's in charge I asked of the you a simple question, well, well, sir. Well, Wanda Sykes said uh, when, when, uh, when Barack Obama got elected, how are you going to complain about the man when you are the man? Now, from the president to the attorney general to the state attorney uh, to the mayor to the head of the police department uh, to the commissions of the schools in the city and in the county uh, to the majority of city council in that city, all of them are black. And you're still saying that we don't run anything? So who's in charge of the no, system? No, no, no. I, I said who created the system. I didn't say we didn't run anything. I, I challenged a lot of those black leaders, by the way. I said who, when we talk about the system, who, what black people have been in charge of any system? I'm not talking about a position. I'm not talking about a mayor. You know good oh, so well you're, 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 you're basically saying that they're, just, so, they're black faces that are still in those correct. positions, so, but they're so, still correct. being part Similar of Similar to you, Mr. So, Elder. So, you're so, a black face in, in a position in the conservative movement. They're, they're just the same. They're just on the other side. I'm talking about so then, we have so never so then, been so then, so then when Martin Luther King said in 1966, I believe there could be a black president uh, in about 40 years' time, then it really doesn't matter if there's one or isn't. No, yeah, so nothing it, nothing he, changes. He was, he was well, naive. The system he was naive also then. killed him as well. The, well, we know that the FBI and the CIA also killed him. That system. You realize that, correct? Wow. An individual killed him. Right. That was also a part of you. So disconnected and just so distasteful and just so, yeah. Mm. Part of Crow Hotel through the system, Cointel correct? Yeah. Uh, not correct. Cointel Pro. Not, not, not correct. He was so killed. the FBI didn't have anything to do with it. The CIA didn't have anything to do with Diego it. Diego Hoover was definitely on Martin's ass. Like, come on. I, didn't, I didn't say he wasn't. No. Uh, Robert Kennedy is the one that approved the wiretaps, but to say that the FBI killed him. I mean, what's your evidence of that? Oh, no, I, yeah, that's, I, I, that's a pretty I, I, serious I, I charge. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Pretty serious charge. Yeah. Serious charge yeah, requires serious about the evidence. Yeah. What is your the LBU? Law proposal? Uh, it is to uh, allow states to set up commissions of retired judges and retired DAs to get rid of these soft on crime, George Soros back DAs that are allowing a bunch of bad people on the streets or not charging bad people to the full extent of the law. And the people that, by and large, are hurt by these people are the very black and brown people living in the inner city. Hmm. There's a um, uh, Larry Krasner is a uh, George Soros back DA in Philadelphia. He's been impeached, but this Philadelphia state Senate wouldn't even take up the case. We've had two attempts to repeal a soft on crime DA in LA County. Uh, and uh, it, it hasn't gone through yet. Uh, we've got a bunch of, in my opinion, this guy, Alvin Bragg, uh, he ran promising to get Donald Trump. And when he got in, he said the evidence wasn't there. And then one of the former DAs writes a book, accuses uh, Bragg of giving uh, Donald Trump a pass. And all of a sudden he brings counts against Donald Trump. I think it's unfair. Do you think members of your party are leaning toward fascism? <laughs> Define fascism. Authoritarianism. D define fascism. I mean, the rejection of democracy, the rule of law and equal rights under the law in favor of a, a strong man, Donald Trump, who interprets the popular will. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, there was a long article about uh, Barack Obama by one of my uh, mentors. His name is Thomas Sowell. He's an economist, he's a black conservative, still alive, right, 95 years old. And he wrote a piece in which he said a lot of people call uh, people like Barack Obama socialist. Socialism is government ownership of the means of production. Mm -hmm. Fascism is when the government allows you to own means of production, but the government tells you what to do. And he said, frankly, technically, people like Barack Obama are fascists. That is to say, these are left-wing people telling you how to run your business, telling you what to sell, telling you what you can't sell. For example, in California, we have a governor named Gavin Newsom who recently said by the year 2035, no more sale of new gas-powered cars. How dare you? Uh, 
most people don't want a, uh, an EV. They like their own gasoline-powered cars, but now you're telling car dealerships they can't even sell them? What do you call that? But what about, you know, uh, when they, you tell women what to do with their bodies? Well, that is a moral issue. I happen to be pro-life, and I believe that, uh, um, that abortion is a sin. That's not telling women what to do with their body. That's expressing my opinion about whether or not it is right or it is wrong. For example, there is a guy right now behind bars in Philadelphia named Dr. Kermit Gosnell. He is an abortion doctor who performed late-term abortions. When I ask people who consider my position to be extreme, I ask them, tell me at what point do you believe pregnancy has gone so far that to terminate the unborn would be, would be homicide? And almost nobody will give you an answer. Uh, so in other words, what you're really telling me then is this guy, Dr. Kermit Gosnell, should be set free. He's a political prisoner. He was persecuted unfairly. If you won't, if you won't tell me when you think at what point a pregnancy uh, cannot uh, be terminated unless it's, unless, unless it's homicide, uh, then to me, you're essentially allowing women to to kill the unborn, no matter how old that unborn is. And I and I think that's wrong. The other thing, Charlemagne, real quickly on this issue, it'd be one thing if the pro-life community was not talking the talk and walking the walk. But there are literally thousands of pregnancy centers all over America, whether it's funding for uh, adoption services, funding for housing, funding for education, funding for job training, uh, to let women know they have alternatives. And every state will decide this. The government shouldn't be passing some sort of law one way or the other regarding abortion. Every state's going to decide that. I'm in California, which is a deep blue state. There have been two initiatives to restrict abortion. I voted in favor of them. I was overwhelmingly defeated. Uh, And when abortion has been put on the ballot in recent years, uh, the people that wanted abortion restrictions have lost. Mm -hmm. Uh, The American people pretty much have said... First-term abortions, they want them to be legal. Late-term abortions, they don't want them to be legal. I happen to disagree with that, but I'm willing to live in a society that has a different point of view than than I have on this issue. Can you have a real democracy if you're taking away people's power of choice? If you're taking away people's power to choose and not giving them any option. Well, if you consider it to be a a crime uh, that abortion is a sin, in my opinion, you're not taking people to right to choose. You're making a moral statement about what's right and what's wrong. There's a lot of sins, though. Sex before marriage is a sin. I'm sure you did some of that. Uh, as for the sins of my past, either the Lord has forgiven me or, or the statute of limitations well, forgive, has, has, has run out. I'm, I'm making a joke about that. A lot, a lot of people, of course, make mistakes, yeah. yes. Okay. And I think that people uh, should deal with the consequences of their actions. And, and if you uh, let people know their consequences to their actions, it will inform their actions and make them behave more responsibly. Any, anytime you allow bad behavior to continue, you're going to get more bad behavior, whether that's... So how does that apply to tra- President Trump then? Because you said that was a two-tier si- system that, because um, I don't, that's unfair. I, I don't, I don't so believe, I don't believe that Donald Trump... You don't he, think he did anything? I don't think he did anything wrong. No, I don't. I believe that he complained okay. about the election the same way Hillary did. Hillary, for four years, referred to the 2016 election as having been stolen her word, not mine. She called Donald Trump illegitimate, her word, not mine. Uh, Jay Johnson, who's Obama's DHS secretary, testified under oath that not a single vote tally was changed by the Russians. They tried, but they failed to change a single vote tally. 66% of Democrats believe the Russians changed vote tallies to get Donald Trump elected, even though Jay Johnson testified under oath not a single one was changed. That's the damage that people like Hillary and former President Jimmy Carter uh, and Stacey Abrams and Hakeem Jeffries and others have said for years referring to Donald Trump as illegitimate. A greater percentage of Democrats believe 2016 was stolen than we feel that way about 2020. But yet nobody calls them election deniers and nobody accuses them of undermining our republic. And they're not undermining our republic. They're complaining. Yeah. And that's it for today. I'm surprised it lasted that long. The interview was disgusting. The lady. I don't even know what to say. But unladylike, argumentative, interrupting Larry when he's speaking, talking over everyone, cutting people off. It was just a terrible interview. And I'm proud of Larry for the way how he carried and acted on on the interview, you know, because probably someone like me, I would have probably just lose it. I would have lost it a long time ago. Like, what is wrong with you? Why, Why you keep asking me gotcha questions? I'm here for a presidential run and you guys are not asking me about my policies and all of these things that matters. You're trying to get me to like agree with you of how you're thinking, talking about basically Democrats are good and Republicans are bad. Come on, you guys have to get it together. And this is the mindset that the Democratic Party has left you guys in. You guys have to do better. Let me know what you guys think.